Hello everyone, this is video number 5 for chapter 1, Numerical Computation. In this video we will review Taylor series. So Taylor series is a way of writing a function into a power series in a specific way. So let's say we have a function given, a function f as a function of x, and let's say it's a, a smooth function. So a way to denote it is like f of x is in the space of c to the infinity, where this number here on top, c to the certain number, meaning this function can be um, differentiated so many times and it's still a continuous function. So the bigger the number here, the smoother your function is. So this is simply referred to as a smooth function. And now this reminds me of a, a silly little joke, if you care to hear. Um, it says that um, I overheard two guys talking in the bar, and one guy said, well, you know, I'm so smooth. And then the other guy said, well, no, you only see one. Okay, back to Taylor series. So for a function f of x, we could write out its so-called Taylor expansion, and we need to choose a point where we expand it. So let's say we expand it about x equals to c. Then the series can be written as follows. So f of x will equal to f at c plus f prime at c times x minus c, how far away you are from c, plus 1 over 2 factorial f double prime at c, x minus c squared, plus 1 over 3 factorial f triple prime of c, x minus c cubed and so on. And hopefully by now the pattern is pretty clear, so each term you add on, you will increase the denominator by 1 and do the factorial, and you increase the derivative by one more higher derivative, and the power of x minus c, you're increasing it one by one more. So we could probably use this neat compact summation notation, so you can say summing from k equal to 0 to infinity, the expression 1 over k factorial f to the power k evaluated at c times x minus c to the power k. So you see these are polynomials in x, and in the end this is a power series. So the neat thing is that if you know the information of the function at the point c, say the function itself, its derivative, second derivative, third derivative, and kth derivative at point c, you can use that information to find the function value at x. x is not c, but probably not too far from c. Okay, So this is called the Taylor series of f at the point c. A popular version of Taylor series is when we use c equals to zero, so we expand the function about zero, and this carries the name, it's the Maclaurin series. So let's take the ser Taylor series and just change c into zero, and then x minus c will equal to x. So we re rewrite it here, and it takes this form, fx equals to f zero, f prime zero times x, 1 over 2 factorial f double prime at 0 times x squared, and so on and so forth, and the, the general um, expression using the summation sign takes this form, so it's 1 over k factorial f k at 0 times x to the power k. So now this looks very, very obviously, in a neat way, a power series. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of Maclaurin series, and probably we are familiar with, say, the exponential function. If you write it out, the Taylor series, and expand it at zero, you get the Maclaurin series. It exactly takes this form, so it's 1 over k factorial, and then the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and evaluated as 0 is just 1, so the f derivative, all the terms are 1, and then you just get x to the power k. So if you write it out, and this gives you 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x third to the uh, over 3 factorial. 
and it is known that this series converges for all x real numbers of x. And some other examples, for example, the sine of x, if you expand it, it takes this form, and if you write out each turn, it actually takes all the odd power terms that's in the exponential function, and then alternate the signs, so positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. And it also converges for all x. And the cosine will be very similar to sine, and except now it takes all the even power terms in the exponential function, and it also alternates the sign, positive, negative, positive, negative, and also converges for x, for all real values of x. And our last example is this 1 over 1 minus x. And then um, the Maclaurin series is actually the geometric series. So probably you are more familiar with this expression where you don't use x and you write a. Right? So that's the geometric series, and we know it converges to that. So if you write out, it will be 1 plus x plus x squared plus 1 third plus 1 fourth, and just adding all the powers of x up. And also we know the geometric series converges under some condition, that is, the absolute value of the x must be strictly less than 1. You might be wondering, um, why do we talk about Maclaurin series here? Well, the reason is the following. It's exactly this is being used in the computer to evaluate func functions. So, you know, the computer can only perform um, simple algebraic operations, such as plus, minus, multiply, and divide. And if you give it a function, a fancy one, say e to the x or cosine of x, how does a computer know how to find its value? Well, what it does is it actually uses these series, the Maclaurin series. Let's take, for example, the exponential function, e to the x. So what happens to the computer when you send in e to the x and in certain values of x? would be it would just use the Maclaurin series and of course the series goes to infinitely many times and the computer can't do that so what it does is it chooses a number n and sufficiently large to guarantee um, the accuracy of your computation and it just adds up the first n plus one terms of the Maclaurin series okay so n would be pretty large then we see Actually, in order to compute e to the x in a computer, it involves a lot of computation. You have to e evaluate this expression n plus 1 times. Okay, there's a factorial n times n multiplications happens here, and x to the power n, and you add them all up. So it takes a lot of computational power to evaluate a function. So. In computer science terminology, we call this expensive. So these are expensive, okay? And when you are writing algorithms later on, you shall be sensitive to that. Your algorithm will run faster if you take care in doing fewer function evaluations. Now let's take an example of computing the number e, let's say we want to compute it to six-digit accuracy. So what can we do? So we use the Maclaurin series. e will be just e to the power 1. So you set x equal to 1 and write out the series. And this becomes 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial and so on. And now keep in mind we only need six-digit accuracy. And we already know the first two terms is give me 2. So I have an integer part. So which means I only need to compute all the way to the fifth decimal places. OK, I can take the sixth decimal place with me, but I don't need to go further. So let's evaluate each term that will be added on. So 1 over 2 factorial is 0 0.5. 
1 over 3 factorial is 1 over 6. It's about this number. So I wrote out 6 decimal places. And then 1 over 4 will be the previous number divided by 4. I get this number. And I keep going until I get 1 over 9 factorial. And I get this number. And I count. I already have 5 zeros here. And this 2 is already in the 6 decimal place, which I actually don't need because I only want six-digit accuracy. So I think, well, I can stop here because 1 over 10th factorial will add one more zero in the front and these two will move to the seventh decimal place. So I can stop, I say. If you want six digits of accuracy, the E can be computed by adding, by taking all the terms up to 1 over 9 factorial. So I add up all these numbers and I get 2.71828. Okay, so we see Taylor series or Maclaurin series can be used to find approximations to complicated function by using only um, algebraic operation. So you shall be wondering at this point um, by taking only finite many terms, how big will be the error? Or does it converge? Do I have some error estimates? And we'll look at now. Okay, let's look at the um, error for um, using Taylor series only finite many terms. So now um, assume now the function can be differentiated k time, k time, so it's in ck basically. So um, introducing the term called partial sum, which is um, the Taylor series here, but I, I will only take the first n plus one terms. So I call this f sub n, where the n indicates how many terms I'm taking. So here is the Taylor theorem, one version of Taylor theorem. There are several of them. So what is the arrow of this partial sum? So the arrow of n plus 1 using n plus 1 partial sum is the f of x minus your partial sum, right? So um, what do we have here if we want to write this into series? So we're basically taking the first n plus 1 terms in the Fourier series and we kind of throw away, we truncate right there and throw away all the rest, which is infinitely many terms. So this still is a series starting from k equals to n plus 1, goes all the way to infinity, and um, the Taylor series here. Now let's take a look at the first term of this infinite series. Let's write out down here the first term. So here I'm writing out the first term. So when k equals to n plus 1, what does the first term look like? It will be 1 over n plus 1 factorial f to the power n plus 1 at c times x minus c to the power n plus 1. Now, the Taylor theorem says that if this sum converges, this series, then the final result of all these terms adding up together is dominated by the first term, which we call the leading term of the arrow. So the theorem says that they actually add up exactly equal to this expression. Pay attention, this is an equal sign. It's not even an arrow bound. It's an exact expression. Okay. So, this one looks very much like this one that I write, just wrote down here, except the derivative is evaluated at some cosi instead of c. So what is this cosi? Well, the cosi is some value between x and c. So um, the theorem says that now um, the arrow is now dominated by the first term. So, when you are doing analysis, all you need to care about is to look for the leading error term, and that gives you a clear indication on how large the actual error will be. 
Okay, we can also make this observation, which is quite obvious. Hmm? If x is close to c, and then what you have in your arrow is a number that's much smaller in absolute value and taken to the power. So the Taylor series would converge more rapidly, and if x shall be further away from c, it will take longer time to converge or might not converge at all. Let's look at a geometric interpretation for the Taylor theorem in the simplest case where n equals to 0. So when n equals to 0, if you write out the Taylor theorem, um, let's say the function f at b expanded at a, taking just one term, so you'll be just taking f of a, and this equals to the distance between them, so b minus a times f prime of some cosi, some cosi lies on the interval between a and b. So let's um, illustrate this in a graph, assuming now b is bigger than a without loss of generality. This expression tells me there exists a cosi such that f prime equals to fb minus fa over b minus a. So what does it mean? So let's say um, this is the graph of my function f. Let's say it um, concaves down, for example, and this is a and this is b. So the expression here on the right-hand side exactly denotes the slope of the secant line connecting a to b on the graph of the function f. Right? So the Taylor theorem says that there exists a cosi on the interval from a to b such that the derivative here, f at cosi, would exactly equal to that slope. So you take this line and you move it up in a parallel sense until a point that it touches the graph of x tangent. And that point, if you find its x value, that's a candidate for your cosi. So you might recognize this from your calculus that this is the mean value theorem. Okay, and it says there exists a cosi, at least one, maybe even multiple of them. Okay, that's all for this video and hope you enjoyed it.